Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, it's been not too long since I actually uploaded a video um, on my channel about my upcoming six month taper. So the 13th, my, I'm actually filming with my phone. I tried my computer and it's just really grainy looking. Um, and it's, so I apologize. I know you guys hate the long um, video, I guess angles, but when I try to switch my phone over, it's just like, everything gets cut out. Um, I do have my dad's camera. I am not computer savvy. I don't know how to even work that thing. So I would be here for forever trying to figure it out. So, um, I apologize. Uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the picture and quality is better on this than it is on my laptop. So I wanted to make a video today, um, for the simple reason is I've, kind of documented my journey, maybe not so much yet through video. Um, most of my journey though, that I've been documenting in my mind, the biggest thing that comes to me, and we've been kind of discussing this in our groups, is that tolerance. It's a big, <laughs> big keyword in, 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 in benzos. Um, and I apologize if my voice is going up and down. Um, I'm dealing with some tintinitis in my ears. Um, I don't know. I've noticed it. I, I want to say it's benzo related, but then again, I think a portion of it is my sinuses. I've been very sick with a sinus infection for over a month. Um, so like any kind of vibration, like the TV or when I'm talking with my own vibration, like my ears, I don't know. They just start humming and buzzing and it, it's it's really annoying so i just wanted to apologize for that first off so getting back to benzo so i wanted to do this video because i made a comment yesterday in our group that i feel badly for all of us who are not aware of well actually i feel bad for everybody in my group that any of us have to go through what we're going through i mostly feel bad for the people who don't know yet that every, and I don't want to say it, people who would just have symptoms in general, but I'm saying people who are on benzos, who are sick, who don't know the terminology tolerance. Intolerance, to be real, is I, and I think everybody could agree with me, you guys out there who are on benzos, you guys out there who've tapered benzos, um, you guys who have gone through the withdrawal. Um, I mean, the biggest thing where we all meet in the middle is we all hit a tolerance on our medicine. And that's how we either found out it was the benzo, such as Ativan, Valium, um, Clonopin, um, I'm sorry, my brain is so bad. In 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 all the others that you guys already know about, I like to I like to name them because a lot of people will see my videos and be like, "What is a benzo?" Like, and and I don't want to categorize it just as the Ativan that I'm taking because the fact of benzos there are so many. They all are a different acting, such as longer lasting, some are shorter acting, um, but ultimately together, benzos they destroy. We, we, we all know this. So I think, and that's the comment that I made yesterday was that I feel more worse for people who are out there who are searching like I did six, seven months ago, not knowing why in the world I was sick for three years, why, why these specialists are telling me I'm fine. Then I started to think, is it mental? Is there something really wrong with me? Because again, going back, whether it sounds repetitive or not, if you're new to my channel, I wouldn't have blamed a pill that I was on for over three and a half years and to go back and think that's the culprit. But after going to the ER, going to the cardiac doctor, going to the internalist, going to the gastro doctor, going to my general practitioner doctor several times, I could pull up if I wasn't on my phone, my, my, my chart, literally even just since tapering. Like I haven't seen my GP, not saying I wasn't sick, but because I was seeing different specialists because I was thinking it was other real health conditions. I haven't seen my GP since 2016, since I started tapering. Now I'm there like <laughs> make the coffee and let's sit down. Like that's how much I'm there because my, I noticed my immune system has weakened, but that that's a whole nother video. So big, the big word today that I want to discuss is tolerance. Most of us, that's where we've come to the crossroad. That's where we've realized that, wow, 
it's the benzo. It's, it's, you know, the reason why I'm feeling so badly. It's the reason why I'm not getting sleep at night. It's the reason why my hair is falling out. I've got benzo belly. My, my appetite is different. I'm losing, I'm gaining weight. Um, I'm unable to eat refined sugars. I can't have carbohydrates. I, I feel sick in my case. I can't touch beef. Beef makes me I thought I had food poisoning one time. It wasn't. It actually was from benzo belly. I've never in my life been allergic to any food, had any allergies up until the four years of being on this pill, going into tolerance, and going through a taper. So I know me better than anybody that that's what it is. So I think the problem with doctors, it's two ways, in my opinion. I'm a very unbiased person. I don't want to push all the blame and say every doctor, every person, because that sounds like I'm creating a stereotype and I don't like to be judged no more than I know you guys don't want to be judged. There are doctors out there who are deliberately don't care. There are doctors out there who are still learning that do care, but they're un, they're, there's no awareness and they're uninformed. Then you have a doctors out there who just they they're they're by the book they listen to what they're taught in med school instead of listening to their patient so i think that's the big problem with us when we go to these doctors and we're looking for help the first problem there's not enough another keyword <laughs> awareness there's none when i first started googling on the internet after i joined my group and i realized what was wrong with me I could not believe that everything that I Googled that was either benzo or Ativan, symptoms, side effects, long-term use, everything that came up in my vision and in front of me was detox centers. If, you're no, if you know someone or someone you love is abusing benzos, contact us. We can help. We can detox you. They even discuss how bad benzos are. But what they don't tell you is for the people that are in my group, we haven't abused our medication. So we are that percentage where we took it as directed. As we hit tolerance and it stopped working, that's what benzos are designed to do. They're, they're actually to be used only a two to four week period. So that should tell any doctor it's not going to last. So you have a bunch of choices. You either get off of it which that rarely, I've rarely seen people get off their benzo. The only time that I've ever seen people like use their own decision to get off a benzo is to go on another medicine, another benzo, or really not by choice, to be honest with you. From, from just the research I've done, it's not been by choice. So people in my group were cold turkeyed. You'll see the word, the letter CT a lot. That's what it means is cold turkeyed. Um, they are blamed by their doctor that they are not taking their medicine as, as prescribed because they either can't find it in their urine sample. I've actually had that happen um, at the ER. That doesn't mean I'm not taking my medicine as directed. Some urinalysis testing is not sensitive enough to pull up a benzodiazepine. Um, I've seen where people have done drug tests random where the drug test has been corrupted and it says that they were doing stuff, then they redid it and it was it was negative. So all in the same day. So I'm sorry, that that to me is is bogus. And if you still believe though somebody is abusing their meds, you go to law or I'm sorry, I'm I'm thinking of lawyers because of all this her horrendous just doctor stuff, but doctors should already know when they go to school. They are not supposed to cut off any medicine. You can see commercials on TV. They tell you, do not stop taking your medication. It doesn't matter if it's blood pressure pills, Paxil, Wellbutrin, you know, any SSRI, any antipsychotic. You are not supposed to stop your medication. Like you are not supposed to stop it. So they already know that that's just, that's bogus. And that by them doing that, they're causing a severe problem. Even the detox centers tell you, you don't stop taking any kind of medication like that. You're just asking for seizures and, you know, anxiety attacks, panic attacks. I mean, death, literally. I mean, literally death. Benzos and alcohol are the only two things that you should never, and I'm not saying stop, you know, an SSRI, but I'm saying are the two most deadliest drugs, like, to stop. Substance, alcohol, and benzodiazepines. We should never stop them without 
you know, under supervision or, or doing what we know to be safe. And that's what we are doing in our group. And thank God for groups because they have saved more people than you know. Doctors and detox centers actually have destroyed more people in my group than anything else. Isn't that crazy? Like you would not think going into some people say, oh my God, these groups are crazy and they're, 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 they're hypochondriacs. They're, they're crazy about, you know, this, they're asking about that. They're, they're worried that their hair is going to fall out if they drink coffee. Like, but what they're not understanding is in the group's defense, A, they've saved me. So I'm going to have nothing but good things. And I'm not saying there's not negative things about groups because that's a whole nother subject. But what I'm saying is the group cared enough about me to, to take a second to come out of their misery, of their pain, of how they're feeling, how, how horrific they've been, you know, just they've been done wrong by their doctor, by someone they trusted. And they took the time out to say, Melissa, don't go to detox. They don't know how to get you off of Benzo. They cannot keep you there longer than a certain time, which I couldn't go there anyhow longer than a certain time. I have a family, I have a son, you all know that. Um, so they're just going to quickly pull you off and leave you to fend for yourself. And nine times out of 10, they're going to add more medicine to your regime, which I don't need. I'm on one pill, one little tiny pill that I never thought would destroy my life. I don't need more meds. So for me, the groups have literally saved me. Okay, I'm still here. Waves suck. This outer, I hate when my doctor or anybody looks at this. This exterior does not, does not even show half of what's happening here, here, and here. And I'm actually pointing in my stomach, so. But yes, the, the, this, the outside, I've even gone to the doctors, literally stripped the makeup off and everything else. And, and you know, because they look at the labs, you're fine. So, um, yeah, never misjudge seeing this in, in this, in, 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 in the belly, because that's where most of our area problems are, is the head and the belly, um, that we're okay. So groups have literally, and I'm seeing more surface, which I'm so glad, um, just documents um, online talking about articles of, of how groups are saving, how groups are helping taper, how groups are doing more than doctors are doing. So I'm not saying you're not going to get crazy stuff. You, remember, you've got thousands of people that are angry, they're resentful, they're pissed off, they're, you know, their life has been dumped upside down from where they were, might have been horrible with anxiety, but now it's a war zone that they're going through. So for me, the groups, they have saved me. You just have to limit, and I've said this before in, in videos, you just have to limit. If you're, if you're, if you're triggered that day, um, and, and things are bothering you, there are some days where I just feel so badly for myself, so badly for so many people. I'm at the my wit's end with, with wanting to fight this. I'm tired of, I can get up and do the dishes feel like a great mom. And an hour later, it's like, boom, it just hits me in the back of my knees. Like if you've ever, when you were younger, had somebody hit you in the back of the knees and your legs just go and the whole body goes, that's how I feel. I can feel so normal and get into reading a book. And then in 20 minutes, I'm sitting there like, what the hell am I doing? I'm bored. I, I'm not, I'm not happy. I, I'm not, my mind isn't focused in what, what's in this book. Um, you know, my daughter can come home from school, tell me, mom, this was my day. And I can literally sit here and just stare at her like this. And then she thinks I don't care about her and I'm not, you know, paying attention, but that's not it. It's, I've got this blank look on my face because sometimes there's nothing in here. Like I literally feel like where, who I was in my feelings here, there, there's nothing. And I know that's such a horrible thing to say, but it's so true. So Getting back to tolerance is so many people don't know who are on benzos. And if I'm speaking to you and if you found my video today, it may be a godsend for real. Like I the same way. I did not think all of these symptoms and I'm talking like I wouldn't even be exaggerating if I said thousands like I'm not kidding you. So let's say thousands of symptoms but nobody's yet found anything wrong with you. Nothing, they've never found anything to back what you're feeling. The head pressure, the headaches. When you get sick, your whole body just collapses. Like a little cold turns into you're dying. 
um, like me. I'm normally with a sinus infection a couple weeks, I can go on amoxicillin, start to feel better. Um, my son, as you all know, um, he's been hospitalized once and then seen at the clinic another time where he was sick, but they sent him home due to good A and C levels. He's going through chemo. Um, I got sick the same day. I've still been sick. My son who's going through chemo got over it quicker than me. So what I'm trying to say is benzos destroy. I don't care what, I don't care what pharmaceutical is watching me. I don't care what medical doctor is watching me. I didn't go to school to get a medical degree, but guess what? You can't go to school to get a medical degree to know what you feel here and you feel here. No doctor can go to school and learn to get a real feeling of what you're feeling. So doctors depend on why do you think we walk into their office, their first things are, why are you here today? And what are your symptoms? So if you're not gonna listen to what our symptoms are, then why do you even ask us if you're going to put judgment on what we're telling you? So I'm not gonna spend a $30 copay to go see my doctor, and she knows me like this, cause I'm not a hypochondriac. Um, to go see her if I'm fine. Like if I'm fine, there is no need to be seen at the doctor's office or the walk-in. I'm fine. There's no, there's no issue there. Okay. So if, if they depend on us so much to, to put out our symptoms, why do they question them? Like, I'm not just going in like, oh man, you know, I just got a headache today and I just feel kind of blah. Like I'm literally going into detail of things that even depression don't just cause. Um, even a disease disease, like, I mean, no, do I have like cancer or autoimmune diseases? No, but what I'm saying is everything that I've got going on is a come and go thing, you know, and having the lab work to back it up only leads to one thing, and that's benzodiazepines. That's the Ativan I've been on for four years. So that's kind of what I'm saying is a lot of us don't know what tolerance is. Any benzo, and I hate when people say this, and I hate to use the word hate because it's so... It's just not a, it's not a happy word. But what I dislike about what people say, and I've seen so many people's videos and I'm not judging them, but, oh, well, you know, I've been on benzos for a while and I'm doing great. And it's like, you know, that must be something with you. You, you have something going on. But to be honest with you, it's not. I started out on 0.5 milligrams of my benzo. I'm one of the few and lucky ones who was never increased because I don't deal with psychiatrists. I've had, as I told you guys before, past issues with my daughter and myself being polydrugged on just handing me medicine after not even knowing me for maybe 40 minutes and want to send me out of your office with massive drugs that I could have OD'd on. You don't know me. You don't know my mental state. Um, a survey, sorry, those surveys, there's no science in in, in the brain, there's none. So when they tell you that there's a chemical imbalance in your brain, they tell everybody that. Everybody has a chemical imbalance in the brain, but what they can't tell you is they can't prove it. So if you can't prove it, how do you use medicine to treat it when you don't even know how that medicine is going to react to somebody's brain, their genetics, their just their overall makeup of their of their dynamic of their body? You're you're not going to know how that medicine is going to affect them because the simple fact is that there's no science behind psychology. Psychiatry. There's none. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say psychology, psychiatry. There's none. If that was the case, then they would be able to do tests, not surveys, because we all can pass the survey and say we're bipolar. It's the world. We live in a really, really bad world right now. We all deal with depression, insomnia, sadness, anger, resentment, um, financial problems, relationship issues, children issues bullying, whatever it is that we're all dealing with in, in, in our everyday life is called life. It's the umbrella of life. You don't go and put somebody on a med though because they're a little sensitive. What you do is you give them a prescription for therapy and teach them how to cope with the traumas that they've had to deal with, whether it's their childhood, their, their, their teenhood, or their adulthood. So I don't see why more people aren't taking a prescription pad, writing down therapy, Give that a shot. Why does medicine have to be the first the first suggestion? I don't get it. So getting back to tolerance, what, what most doctors do, you have a couple scenarios. So, and, and I know it's just from talking to people in my group. Most of them will go back to their psychiatrist and they will say to them, okay, you're still feeling anxious. We need to increase. So there's another keyword, increase your dose. So you increase the dose to whatever they do. Now, again, I don't know how far up 
I haven't really researched that yet. I know, geez, I know some people who are on six milligrams of volume. Like volume, my 0.5 to volume is like four milligrams of volume. So as you can see, volume is crazy, crazy strong. Excuse me. So then what happens? You increase it. You give the body what it's begging for. The dependency is there because you're not supposed to be on it longer than two to four weeks. So that's where therapy should have come in. Then they're on this medicine. They feel amazing again. Now, mind you, these are the people who don't know anything about tolerance because why would a psychiatrist tell you that? They're there to treat so they can make money. Cures don't make money. Treatment makes money. Brings you back. So they increase your dose. So let's say you started on, as an example, I started out originally on one milligram of Ativan. I never took it for a couple of reasons. My body's very sensitive, thank God, um, for real, because I'm allergic to all SSRIs. Like I literally cannot take anything without collapsing. So when I took the one milligram of Ativan, I was exhausted. It was like taking Benadryl for me. So I was like, okay, well, if I can't function, why do I need to be on this medicine? So I always took the 0.5. Okay, so I started with the 0.5. So if I went into a psychiatrist, they probably would have put me on one or two milligrams of Ativan. So depending on how far that would take me, it could be three months, six months, a year, two years, all depending again on how my body makeup is because we all are different. Meds, we're all, you know, experiencing the same, you know, symptoms and withdrawal from um, these benzos, but some of us have worse things than others. So, and I believe genetics plays a huge role in that as well. But what genetics don't play a role in is benzodiazepines will affect, and I will say this again, and I've never felt so strongly about something because I am not a miss know it all. I'm learning every day, just like y'all are. I'm learning being a better mom, a better person, a better wife, okay? So, but one thing I will say, benzos, and I will say this, twice. Benzos do not discriminate against age, race, gender, genetics at all. They do not at all. There are 4,700 people in my support group ages. I would probably say the median age is maybe 25 to I've seen people above 65. Okay. We are white, we are black, we are Asian, we are from all parts of the world, United Kingdom, United States, Southeast Asia. Um, we're from all over, different, different lifestyles, different cultures, different skin colors. Benzodiazepines do not discriminate. Once you've come to the keyword tolerance, you will feel the hell that these pills will cause, can keep causing. And can, and, and can destroy in that time. I honestly did not start feeling better. And I don't want to say better because I'm not healed. I have days where I just want to cry all day. I, I, I'm angry. My chest is heavy. I feel like just walking across my living room, I'm going to pass out. My legs get weak and queasy. I feel disoriented in my brain. I feel fog. I feel dizziness. I feel... You know, like both of my ears are clogged. My throat hurts. Just, I feel like I'm on my deathbed. How am I walking around like this? Is, is always the question that I ask myself. Like, how am I literally walking around like this? And then it just goes away and it comes back in these waves. And as we say, windows and waves. Mine lately have been waves for a while, then windows. Then when I'm not sick anymore from like the flu or cold, then I go through windows and waves, windows and waves. And it's almost like a tease, like, ha, you're back to normal. And then it's like, no, no, you're not. Now you're back to feeling like crap again. So it's just, I hate when people think they can get on these benzos and get off of them because I actually know two people, not physically, but just from support groups. They've been on their meds two months in just under a year. And it took them a year to, to taper and a year to even feel better. So imagine those who've been on these for years and years and years or half of their life at that. And the other portion that comes into tolerance is what other drugs are they on? Because it's not just benzos that destroy. The other drugs may not cause such withdrawal 
as benzos. Benzos are the worst. Even even de detox centers will tell you they, they are the worst to get off from. You're better off being on an opiate and being on a heroin than being on a benzodiazepine because of the, the and I'm going to make another video about what are benzos, what they do, etc. But it is the most potent medicine to ever be on. I didn't even realize when I was doing my research that back in the days, if y'all remember those shows like um, My Three Sons, Mary Tyler Moore, um, The Patty Duke Show, um, I used to watch all those with my mom when I was young, The Donna Reed Show, um, even like Dennis the Menace, the old black and white. They were given the women volume back then. They were calling it mama's little helper back then. So they could have this persona of the hair tied back, the, the, the makeup just right, the, you know, the, the, the little aprons, like they had it all together. It was breakfast time and everybody sat together and mom kept the families together. Now that I really look back at those times, were they really that perfect? Because I don't think so. And then I had even found out not long ago that my, my grandmother was on Valium. Um, she unfortunately died young with dementia. Well, benzodiazepines call for a 75% increased risk of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. And I can honestly vouch for that now because I'm 38 years old and my brain doesn't remember 20 minutes ago. I don't remember if I went on last night to pay my credit cards and then I'm sitting here this morning like, and if it wasn't for the email, I wouldn't remember if I paid them. So yeah, you could say I'm preoccupied, but this is an everyday thing. This is an everyday no focus, no enjoyment. The things that I used to love doing, I don't love doing anymore. I can't sit even again and sit and read and enjoy a book for longer than maybe 20 minutes because my mind is going somewhere else. And then you know what, what they're gonna do if I go and seek help about my focus? Let's put you on ADHD. Let's put you on ADHD so now we can give you an upper and what happens is, I know because it's happening to my daughter, so we're gonna give you an upper, and now at nighttime, we're gonna have to give you a sedative to put you to sleep because you're 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 like this. You're teeter-tottering and back, you know, back and forth. So I think the sad thing is, is so many people that I meet, they are on not just a benzo, they're on an antidepressant, an SSRI, they're on something that is going to cause them once they taper off the benzo. They don't know which is causing which. Now me, I can say surely, I know it's all benzo because I'm on no other med besides a melatonin to sleep, which is natural, nothing. I take nothing. And a probiotic, which is a total supplement that is literally saved my life through benzo. Um, because if not, I wouldn't be able to put on no more weight, which I'm stuck at the weight I'm at, which I hate. I'm, you know, was unable to eat. Every time I would wake up, I'd be nauseated. My stomach hurt. You know, I, I wasn't, you know, vomiting, but I wasn't able to, to, you know, I was having abdominal pains. I was using the bathroom too much. It, it's just, it's, it's, it's a hot mess. But again, what people don't get is tolerance is, I can tell you that I went through tolerance for a solid three years. Hold on one sec, I'm gonna grab the phone. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I had uh, my husband just called on um, his break or whatnot. So um, my train of thought is so bad right now. But yeah, like I said, I, I think that's why I wanted to make this video. I don't know, you know, how informative it is. But like I said, the biggest thing is that tolerance is what brought all of us at some point in our group together. Um, and like I said, it's so weird because it when you meet people, and we're not feeding off of each other. Like people try to use that that excuse and I hate that. Well, you know, you guys are just feeding off each other and your symptoms could be like theirs, but they're not theirs. In, in certain circumstances, yes. When you go through a bunch of symptoms, you don't want to Google it and everything else because yes, Google will literally have you dying. I, I totally agree with that. But when you go into a group where everybody who's been on the same medicine, the same category of medications, and they've experienced the same tolerance where the pill and they're all saying this in their story on the news documentaries I've watched even real psychiatrists and I'm going to link a video down below for y'all um I found it so interesting um and it actually is like the behind the scenes of pharmaceutical how real people come forward like like pharmaceutical people who used to work for the pharmaceutical pharmacy um techs Doctors, lawyers, just psychologists, psychiatrists, 
that you know are in the business that are telling the truth and granted it's a really old video but it just really explains how this business is just a money maker that's all it is about that's why none of us get the help that we need and they just keep throwing us on pills saying oh they're just trial and etc cetera, etc cetera. everybody i met had the same story they got really sick one day they had been on this medicine for six months, a year to three years. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't say longer than that when it comes to tolerance because tolerance hits pretty quickly. Um, and depending on the type of, I want to say the type of milligram too, because the higher you are, obviously the longer you can go with me. Mine literally hit, let's see, I had a total hysterectomy uh, October 1st of 2015. So November, December, January of 2016, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So in 11 months, I totally hit tolerance on my medicine. I woke up with the heart racing. I ended up going to an internal list. He literally did every test under the sun. He did, you know, my lipids, my heart. I had an echogram done with a cardiac doctor. Um, he did my genetic testing. Like he literally went because he did not understand either you know, what was going on with me. He thought it was this mutation that he found, but unfortunately, all the signs in my lab work show my mutation is not doing anything bad that would cause any of this. So that is actually under control right now. Um, but literally, I woke up one day out of bed, my heart wouldn't stop racing. I would go places to the doctors, to the grocery store, and my heart was just like beating, beating, beating. Like I, I literally thought, no joke, I was going to have a heart attack. I thought I was going to collapse right there in the store. And this did not feel like your average anxiety, like the anxiety where you're like, oh my God, and you start getting sweaty. This literally was a physical thing happening. It wasn't just mental. This was my whole body was like traumatized. I just wanted to, wherever I was standing in line, whether it was the doctors, and a lot of the times I would cancel my appointments, I would make hair appointments and cancel because I would sit in a chair when they would do my hair and things such as putting the drape, like how they put the cloak around your neck to cover your clothes from getting wet and hair on them. I would freak out, feel like I was choking, just weird fears. I've had anxiety before, but never in my life this kind. This was the worst of the worst of the worst. And the funny thing is, once I started tapering, not saying all my symptoms went away, because I am dealing with withdrawal because I'm lowering the milligram by the day. But that heart racing craziness, just melodramatic, like, oh my God, I'm going to die. This is it for me go to the doctors for everything, it stopped. It literally, I'm not even kidding you, it stopped. And this is even before I knew what tolerance was. It Well, actually, it was after I found out what it was, but still, like, I didn't think, the, yeah, the first couple of months of tapering, they were hell. They were hell, hell. I mean, I, <laughs> I was afraid to get out of bed. Every time my lab came back a little elevated, I was freaking out. Like, it was bad, but as the couple months passed by, I don't even now, six months in, into it, I go through the intrusive thoughts. I go through, you know, the, the the feeling bad, but I can talk myself out of it. Where before it was like my whole body was just in a fight to flight. I was ready to, to, to like, my body was acting like I was ready to lift a car off somebody. Like I had just saw the most horrific accident or something. Like you shouldn't feel that way when you're just standing, waiting in line for your turn at a doctor's office, at, at, you know, the grocery store, the store, you know, the mall, anywhere. You should not feel like your legs are going to buckle. You're sweating when there's nothing going on. I would wake up every morning like that where my heart was just jumping out of my chest. And I'm like, wait a minute here. But of course, I blamed everything on menopause because I can't take hormone replacement therapy. I thought maybe it was all due to that. And that's what ended me up on a benzo was the not being able to take hormones and going through anxiety and panic disorder, which have had someone told me, Melissa, you can deal with this. We're going to give you a prescription and you're going to go to therapy. Just like they would recommend going to physical therapy. If something was, you know, they want to, they don't want to do surgery right away. They want to see if they can heal it with therapy. That's what should have been done with this, with my brain and everything else. They should have taught me how to deal with anxiety, what it was, because I'm telling you something right now, guys, it may seem like the end of the world, and I'm gonna make another video about what's helped me through panic attacks and anxiety attacks. You literally can stop them. And I would never just tell you guys something like that just to tell you. 
for any reason if it doesn't work. DBT, CBT therapy, I haven't had it, but I've done enough. And I know it sounds really stupid, but I'm saying like I've utilized right now because I am home. I don't get out a lot. Um, I'm going through days of too much up and down, but I've done enough in taking advantage of the resources out there on my podcast, on YouTube. Um, you have physicians on YouTube. You have psych psychologists on YouTube um, that have gone through anxiety themselves. They know better more than most people because they do it. They've gone through it. It has literally saved me. I'm not fully healed because I am fighting the withdrawals, the physical stuff, but the mental stuff I've literally been able to, for the most part, now that I'm not freaking out about every little thing and I know what's happening to me and I understand it, you can do the same. Once you find out and learn anxiety, why it's caused, what your body's doing during it, how it's not going to kill you, and the withdrawals are not going to kill you, you learn to stop fearing fear. And when you fear fear, that makes this process, I will tell you, a thousand quadrillion times worse. Because in the beginning, I was feeling those fears. And I was not doing half as good as I am now. And it's not because benzo is not my type of drug where I wish people would really research it where, you know, oh, you're getting lower, you're doing better. No, not necessarily. There's people off who've been off 38 months, 24 months, 65 months, where they may have a small setback from getting something as small as a cold or going through stress because their body just doesn't handle it right now. Their body is still trying to adjust to the medical damage that this pill has caused. And I will say damage. And I will say temporary damage because some feel it's permanent and some feel it's temporary because of the time that they've had to go through this to where it's still not ended. So like I said, guys, I when you go through tolerance, you will know. I mean, you literally, I wish the psychiatrist would take these pills and I wish they would see after a month what it would do to them once we take them off of it. Let them see how bad these symptoms and side effects are with withdrawal, intolerance, and with dependency because they designed this pill to do this. They already knew what this pill would do because they designed it. When you design a sedative and a pill that takes away your feelings, your thoughts, and it suppresses everything into a calm, calm can be great as a person, but when you're being, when you're being forced, excuse me, to be calm and feel nothing, and sit here like this as a robot and just look around totally clueless. How are you living? How are you fulfilling who you are that you're supposed to be? We're not just supposed to be a shell sitting here with clothes on. We're supposed to be, I'm Melissa. You, you're, you are yourself. You feel a certain way that you feel. You have different talents than me. You have different things to offer the world than I have to offer the world. So why, why would we all want to be the same? Calm to the point where we don't feel, we don't know how to cry, we only feel anger and rage, we are not in our own head, so our feelings are in our own. So basically, it's like somebody's coming in, hijacking who you are, taking everything away, stripping bit by bit of who you are. So now, okay, you've suppressed anxiety, but now you've destroyed the person. So where, where has scientific medicine created a, a, a treatment or, or a realistic treatment. They haven't. They haven't created anything realistic because now here you are struggling to get out of bed, can't focus. I know with me, cooking has become a chore. Cleaning has become a chore. I used to wake up in the morning and be halfway decent. Now anxiety isn't fun, but this is 30,000 times worse. I would rather go back to who I was before all this and deal with that than to deal with this. So what I'm saying, guys, is please, for those of you who are newly on a benzo, do yourself a favor. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not a doctor. I don't have a degree, although I did go to school for psychology and things of that nature. But please do your research. You need to learn for yourself. Just even if it's to join a Facebook group in view, you don't even have to go in and say a word. Look at, look at their videos, look at their files, look at their posts every day. There are doctors in my group. There are nurses in my group. The, not saying that we're not just, you know, blue collar folks aren't anything, but 
there's people in my groups who are someone who are way more educated than I am. And they are highly, highly dependent on, on benzodiazepines because again, it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't discriminate against anybody. So you may feel great. I was on benzodiazepines for the first 11 months, like I said, 10 or 11 months. Um, I did feel good. I, I didn't feel high. I didn't feel unusual. I felt like I could go out every day and conquer the day, but you know what? It turned around and it bit me in the butt. It, it wasn't even worth taking the pill when I could have spent those 11 months doing therapy. And I, I'm, I would be possibly healthier and happier than I am right now. I don't like how I look. Benzos have physically changed the way that I look. My muscle mass is gone in my arms and in my legs. I have a hard time gaining weight. I, you know, can't get past 118 pounds. My goal weight I want is 135. I don't eat as well. Food doesn't taste as good. Um, the appetite's not there. Um, my sleeping now for the past three nights, I don't really know what's happened if it was stress of just everyday stress that we all deal with but mine obviously affects my body like it's crazy um you know like it, it it turns around and acts like it's crazy stress when it shouldn't be um this morning i was up at 2 30 i was up at 4 30 i was having crazy nightmares there's times where i'll go back to bed the next day and have the same dreams and they are so horrific i can't even explain them they don't make sense but they are so real at the moment so real that i actually wake up like freaking out my heart is racing um and i never had these kind of vivid nightmares until i got on at a van so but like i said tolerance is the biggest thing if you're sitting at home and you're feeling like you're just not you and i'm not saying you know and especially if you are on a benzo this is mainly for people on a benzo or on an antidepressant because those can do the same thing they can mimic the same types of symptoms maybe not as bad maybe not as severe but they still do it anything that is mind altering anything that you take on the daily that is to change who you are calm you down sedate you um you know put a suppress your feelings change who you feel like you need to be um all of those things can be handled by therapy that's so sad that therapy isn't even available like it should be anymore like it's almost like it's 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 gone it's like how is it gone when it's so in demand and so needed so many of us what people don't understand we all have a mental health and i think this is what gets me People stereotype, the minute you say to somebody, my mental health, they automatically think, you're crazy, there's something wrong with you, you have bipolar, you have borderline personality disorder, or you have schizophrenia, okay? Let me just give the people out there who don't know this a little bit of history. Um, now, first of all, some of this is opinion. Some of this is what I've learned from others who merely it's not opinion because I've seen it, I've heard it. Um, and the other portion is backed up by medical evidence. Like your knees, your feet, your teeth, your eyes, we need a physician for just about everything. Your gut health, your thyroid, so you go to an endocrinologist for that. Your heart, you go see a cardiac doctor like I did, varicose veins, problems that I'm having with my, my vascular. I, I saw a vascular, a vascular um, doctor for that. What people fail to forget is this up here. Your mental health is just as important as your heart, as all those things that I mentioned. If we don't keep our mental health healthy, so by diet, by positiveness, well, positivity, re positive reinforcement, and all of those things, and keep our life balanced between dealing with the stressors that we are faced with every day. Some people have it worse than others. Some people are going through financial. Some people are going through actual health issues. Some people like me, I have a son who's going through chemo, okay? If we don't keep our mental health in this country, in all countries, it's anywhere around the world. Any of us who obviously, all humans have brains. We need, and I truly believe this now after all this, that we need to keep our mental health in check and we don't because people are afraid to be judged. 
They're afraid people are going to call them crazy. They're afraid that someone's going to refer them to a psychiatrist, which we all know psychiatrists are not there to help with the issues. They're there to treat the symptoms. And all they do is prescribe medicine that makes you have symptoms anyhow, then you're counteracting this medicine for this medicine and so on. So I truly believe at, in my own skin that we all should twice a month, once a month, whatever it is, we should all be going to therapy. I don't care if we all feel like we're fine. You don't have to be on a benzo. You don't have to be on an antidepressant to go to therapy. We all need coping skills because we're not using them. If you view the world today as I do through my eyes, go look what's happening outside the door. People are killing, they're robbing, they're stealing, they're angry, they're miserable, they're, they're feeling betrayed, they want revenge, they, they, they want somebody to pay for what they've done to them. We are not handling our mental health the way that we should at all. Instead, some of it's our fault, some of it's the professional's fault, and the other half is the pharmaceutical's fault because they just want to throw a pill at somebody and think that that's the easiest way to handle us so they don't have to deal with us. And at the same time, they can make billions. Well, I hate to tell you guys, we all need therapy. Every one of us needs therapy. Me, I need therapy for um, things in my childhood, my adulthood, that maybe I haven't solely dealt with the right way. Not that I'm a mean person and I'm taking it out on anybody, but deep down, that's obviously what caused my anxiety. Something, there's a cause and effect for everything. So whether it's something that you've been dealing with in, in, in your childhood that's come into your adulthood now, or things, we, we all know that we can set things aside and we, we learn to live and deal with around them. But if we're not dealing with them, those things cause us to go off the deep end. So you've got the issues there. Then you've got the medicine people are giving us, which creates more, in my opinion, more of a monster. If you go into my blog and read Frankenstein, you'll see what I'm talking about. So you're taking all of this and bottling it up. You're throwing a medicine on top of the already issues that are here. So you're throwing the med on top and you're just creating somebody not to feel anymore. And what happens when you don't feel? You just don't really care. And that causes people to go and snap. I truly, truly believe that mental health is half of the violence and crime in this world today. The hatefulness, the murders, the heinous crimes that you hear about that you can't even believe half of the time because it's like, what, wait, what? He, she did what? So again, I'm not blaming saying that people aren't responsible for their actions. But when we let this go and we don't treat it like we would a broken knee or going through physical therapy for our back or a car accident we got into, it, you know, we are not doing anything but ignoring what's here and those thoughts don't go away. You can ignore them, you can push them to the side, but eventually it starts to cause your body to go into panic, anxiety mode, insomnia, not sleeping at night, if you're not active like me and you're not working out, your insomnia gets worse because you're actually going to bed and you're not tired from anything. I believe that's a portion of why I can't gain weight because I'm not active anymore. But a lot of it is the Ativan suppressed all this stuff. So again, it might have already been there, but it's making it worse now because now I physically can't function. Before it was like I was a little bit impaired. Now it's like people are bedridden from this stuff. So Please, you guys, for real, think of your mental health. It is so, so important. I cannot stress that enough. I know just from myself, I'm not ashamed anymore. And we need to stop that stigma. I'm not ashamed anymore to say, next week I will be starting therapy. I'm not ashamed at all. I need to be a better version of me. And I can't be a better me, a better mom, a better wife, or a person that deals with stress well or any of those things because once I even get off my benzo in six months, my body's gonna go right back to stress and disaster because I already didn't know how to deal with it because nobody showed me, they just threw a medicine at me and, and assumed, okay, well, that's a temporary fix. We'll deal with whatever comes after it doesn't work anymore. Well, here I am four years later and look at me. I've lost all this life that I can't get back. It is gone. So now I'm struggling 
to make myself get up every day, to make myself do my hair, to make myself do things because I've lost so much life and I'm sure you guys have too. I don't want to lose any more than I already have. So when you start feeling funny on your benzo, please do not go back to the psychiatrist. Do not go back. They will only increase you and put a hold on your temporary tolerance and make you feel good for what? The next six months to a year to two years. Then, then you find yourself, you're on three, four, five milligrams of this stuff, the harder it's going to be to get off of it and to heal. So please, you guys, I, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I will tell you, if it wasn't for nurse practitioners in my group and other people using their intelligence on top of what they've experienced with benzos, I would not be here today. I'm here today making videos because I want to help that next person who hits tolerance, doesn't know what it is, thinks they're going in the outside of their mind, going crazy, feels like they're dying, feel like they need to see every doctor above the sun because they feel like they're dying from cancer, their body is closing in, it's collapsing. And I wanna help those people not take their life as we've lost so many already. This epidemic of benzodiazepines needs to stop. Antidepressants needs to stop. Please write more prescriptions for therapy, for coping skills, for ways of dealing with what we're going through and stop pushing medication. You are only destroying lives, families, children, married couples, everything. You're ruining somebody's cousin, their sister, their aunt, their brother. I cannot stress enough. Your mental health is by far the most ignored ignored, I don't even know what I want to classify it as, but it's the most ignored area of the body. And we need to stop doing that. We need to take better care of our mental health. We all have it. We all deal with death. We lose someone we love. We deal with a job maybe doing us wrong, losing our job. Money is tight. The world is wicked. People are judgmental. We go to work and it may not be the greatest place. We might deal with fighting with, you know, coworkers, bosses. This is why people are going insane because they don't know how to cope with what's here and here. Instead, they're given a drug or they're pushed off saying, there's nothing wrong with you. Go deal with it. Get over it. That's not the answer. The answer is stronger mental health, less, less medication, in more therapy, more therapy, more physical, physical um, fitness, better eating, it all connects together how we feel on the daily. So like I said, guys, I'm sorry this video is so long, but I was feeling a little bit better this afternoon. Um, I was feeling horrific today. They were um, repairing um, our house from Hurricane Michael when it came through. Our roof was replaced and all that stuff. So with the banging, my ears, like I just, oh my gosh, I thought I was going to go insane today. And sometimes, not always, making a video makes me feel better because I feel like if I didn't do anything today, my video might be able to change even one person from taking their life, one person from going on the benzo, one person from increasing the benzo, one person to know what tolerance truly is because I didn't know. I literally thought I was going crazy. Like I said, guys, I have been to a cardiac doctor. I've been to a gastro doctor. I've been to a GP. I've been to a varicose vein doctor. Matter of fact, I went, went back to two OBGs because I thought maybe with my surgery and not being able to be on hormones, yeah, that could play a little bit of a role. That probably is what, you know, caused most of my panic and, you know, anxiety, which I have had as a kid, but it just created even more because everything that was in me is now gone and I can't balance without hormones like most people. So, but again, the medication <laughs> destroyed me. It literally destroyed my life. My son is four going on five and I've been sick for almost four years. So as you can see, I I'm not the mom that I should be. I need to now work on me going through recovery once I'm off this med in six months, but I will not stop making videos. One thing I will tell you guys is there are so many amazing people out there and I get, and I'm not judging, so don't think this, I get why you stop making videos. This is such a horrific experience that to be real, I sit here and I still can't believe that I'm going through this. I still can't believe that 
after all of this, I'm still sitting here like I'm a product of somebody throwing a medication at me, not knowing what it could do. It's not studied enough. And for the people who know what it does, they don't care. And I'm still sitting here in, 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 in this, this triangle of, 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 of fire. So I'm going to be making videos every single week if I have to, because I know that those videos that are there truly help me. So to all you guys who made those videos, thank you. If you're watching my video, thank you so much. And I also want to give a shout out to, um, I literally started, I think with like seven subscribers. I, you know, never started a YouTube channel. Um, as far as in any direction, I just kind of joined YouTube back in, I think 2011 or so. Um, you know, and I use it for my mental health. I use it, you know, to watch DIYs or cooking or things in that nature. Um, but I really utilize the help out there and I hope everybody else does too, because there's so much free help out there that we need to utilize it a lot more. Um, but I do want to thank all my new subscribers. So if you're new to my channel, you might want to go back to some of my earlier videos um, to kind of understand why I started my channel. Um, I do have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, and I do have a blog that what I'm trying to do is write everything that I'm telling you guys and then film a video. So I can kind of keep a documentary of the blog and then a video will follow after to be, you know, one will be a written version versus a video. So, um, but please, if there's anything you guys want to see or know about or are confused on, um, you know, leave it in the down bar, leave anything. I'm so open to whatever I can help with. Again, these are all my own opinions. I'm not a medical, you know, person. I used to be a nurse um, years and years ago as a CNA. I do have some knowledge from going to school, but a lot of my knowledge is the best knowledge and that is the knowledge coming from the real in meaning i deal with this on the daily 4700 people in my group deal with this on the daily so what better person to help you through who's been there and someone who's not going to shrug you off and tell you hey go to a psychiatrist you know you'll you'll be fine just get on some meds that's not my intentions my intentions is raising awareness my intention is getting out the word of what it's doing to people the types of people that are dying from it the type of people who are committing suicide from it. So that's why I, I, I created the Bullies Behind Benzos, which is my blog and also my channel name because I want it out there what these pills are doing, what antidepressants are doing to people. We have an epidemic on our hands. It's not just opiates. It's not just street drugs. We have a epidemic on our hands right now with just us taking our prescription as prescribed. So again, you guys that are new, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for, you know, being supportive with all the positive feedback. Um, you know, every day is not a walk in the park for me. Every day is an up and down. Every day is not easy. It's mental fighting. It's physical fighting. It's, you know, it's a whole lot. And I'm exhausted by just picking up my house anymore. Um, so like I said, I want to start striving to do videos once a week. Um, I want to be a channel where I can be refreshed and updated. So anybody new coming into the game is going to have help with what they can. Um, I also was thinking about even getting um, another person that I know very well to do like a split video with me to give you her experience kind of like um a live podcast style but with you know maybe we can do like a split screen because she's in a different state but there's a lot of things that I want to incorporate on my channel because I feel like if I can't do anything but sit here and go through whatever it is that's going to happen I can't stop and I've learned this with withdrawal. Whatever's gonna be is going to be and there's nothing I can do to stop it. But I can control it a little bit better, I can stop the fear from it and I also can help other people. And I know how much courage it took for people to step outside of their comfort zone in my group and put their pain and suffering on hold to help me. So if I can do the same, it, 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 it it's giving back and it means so much to me. So again, all of y'all who have subscribed to my channel, I cannot thank you enough. Um, and I am thinking about doing, let me know what you guys think. Um, there's a couple books out there. 
um, that I was thinking about doing a giveaway on because maybe they can help other people. I want to pass down some things that have helped me. So if you guys think that's a good idea about the giveaway, um, just maybe on some books that you guys would maybe like to win in the giveaway, um, you know, let me know because that's something that I was thinking about doing just to say thank you guys for subscribing. Um, again, if you're out there and you're not subscribed, you know, just subscribe and hit the notification button. Anytime that I, I upload a new video, you guys will be notified. So again, thank you for you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. I really appreciate it and I hope that I can help in any way. Thank you guys. Bye.